Well, we have spent some time figuring out what limits are and how to work with them, how to compute them, and so on. And we've done that for regular functions. So what we have seen is that for a function f of x, what we do if there is some value for which the function seems to have some interesting behavior, we look at the limit as x approaches that value of the function. Well, the same question could be asked for parametric curves. If we have a parametric curve and there is some value of t for which something interesting seems to be happening to the curve, can we compute something like the limit as t approaches c of that parametric curve? But what exactly would that mean? Well, let's go back to what we meant for the regular function. In a regular function, limit as x approaches c of f of x means we're asking what happens to y as x approaches c. Well, similarly, in a parametric curve, we're looking at the two coordinates separately. So in a limit situation, we're asking what happens to x and y separately as t approaches c. Well, but that simply means we're going to compute the limit as t approaches c of x of t and of y of t separately. Well, once we have this understanding of what a limit of a, a parametric curve means, uh, basically just reduces to finding two separate limits, we can apply all the techniques we've seen so far, and we can reach similar conclusions and find similar information. So let's go through some examples to see how this works out. So let's say we're looking at this particular parametric curve, and so the first thing that we want to do is ask, well, what are the values of t for which it seems to be worthwhile to compute a limit? Because both functions have denominators, we're going to check for when those denominators become zero. And that gives us as interesting values, of course, the values of t equal negative 2, where the first function becomes undefined, and the value t equal 2, where the second function is undefined. So we're going to check them one at a time. So we'll start with negative 2. And so as we compute the limit as t approaches negative 2 of the parametric curve, as we said, what that means is the limit as t approaches negative 2 of the first function and the limit as t approaches negative 2 of the second function. Both are fairly simple limits that we've seen before. So I leave it up to you to check that those two limits end up being negative 4 and sine 2 over 4, respectively. All right, so what does that mean? It means that both limits are finite, and they both exist, and we have seen this situation before. We have a situation where the function itself is not defined, the curve doesn't exist, but we can approach uh, both the x and the y coordinate by letting t become as close to negative 2 as we want, and we end up with two actual numbers, negative 2 and sine 2 over 4. Well, but that means that we're dealing with a single point hole. So we're going to draw that in a minute, but now let's have a look at the other value. If we look at the limit as t approaches to from the left, and I'm going to tell in a minute why I'm just looking at it from the left, again, same idea. That means that we're looking at the two limits separately. Again, they're both fairly simple and basic limits. I'll leave that up to you to check that, in fact, those two limits end up being 0 and negative infinity. OK, what does that mean? It means that as t is approaching 2 from the left, the x-coordinate is approaching 0, but the y-coordinate is going all the way down to negative infinity. Okay, we've seen what that means before. That is a vertical asymptote. Let's have a look at the graph of this curve as produced by a calculator, and let's see if what we see on the graph is consistent with the information we found. So here is the graph. And you can see that there is a single point hole at negative 4, and sine 2 over 4. Well, we can't see the hole, of course, if it's a single point hole, so it doesn't show up in the graph, but it's there. And we can also see that there is a vertical asymptote. x is approaching 0, y is going to negative infinity. At this point, now you can see why I only looked at the left limit as t was approaching 2. Now I'm going to leave it to you as an exercise to check what happens as t approaches 2 from the right and then check that, in fact, that is also consistent with the graph that you're seeing in front of you. What about when t is approaching infinity? Can t go to infinity? Well, of course it can. In this case, the, both functions are defined for all values of t except the two that we just saw. So we can let t go to infinity. Again, these are two fairly simple limits. And as we go to positive infinity, we end up with infinity comma 0. What does that mean? It means that as t goes to infinity, the x-coordinate goes to positive infinity, but the y-coordinate goes to 0. Again, this is a situation we've seen before that tells us that we have a right horizontal asymptote. And you can see that in the graph, right? As the x is approaching infinity, 
the curve is getting closer and closer to the x-axis, which is the line y equals 0. Now, similarly, if we let t go to negative infinity, we end up with negative infinity, comma, 0. And in this case, we're going to end up with the left horizontal asymptote. Now, the graph here is not as clear because, of course, as you know, horizontal asymptotes can cross the graph as many times as you want. And because we have a sine t in the function, uh, this, in fact, is going to happen infinitely many times. And the curve is going to bounce up above and below the asymptote. But that is going to happen. Now, be careful, though. When we're dealing with regular functions, when x goes to infinity, we're looking for horizontal asymptotes. They may or may not be there, but we're looking for horizontal asymptotes. However, with parametric curves, as t approaches infinity, we may even get a single point hole. Of course, infinity is not a number, so we can't reach it, but there may be situations where, in fact, you do end up with the curve approaching a single point hole. And you'll see that in some of the examples you'll work out. So how are we going to use the information coming from limits related to a parametric curve? Well, let's summarize that. So as t is approaching a finite or infinite value c, what can happen? Well, here we have some kind of a graph. If both the limits for x and y approach finite numbers, we have a single point hole. And you can see it there. Actually, this time it's a little bit more visible. right? So that's a situation where you would have a single point hole. If the x limit approaches a number and y approaches positive or negative infinity, we end up with a vertical asymptote, again, as you can see here in the picture. And of course, we'll have to check both the left and the right side and see what values of t produce the left or the right. So we have to be a little bit more careful and investigate a little bit more deeply, but same idea as what we had with functions. And similarly, if the x coordinate goes to plus or minus infinity and the right coordinate approaches a number, we have a horizontal asymptote. And again, we'll have to check whether it's a left or right horizontal asymptote. Well, what happens if both approach infinity? Hmm, that's a good question. We can make a general rule that applies always because all kinds of things can happen. So in each situation, you'll have to uh, analyze what information you're getting, try to find out more about the behavior of the function, and then use all that information to make your conclusions.